record. Hello and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sora Darkchild, and this is Ami Darkchild. Hey. And welcome back to Let's Replay Ace Attorney Justice for All. Last time, we did part two of the investigation, and things started to get both very serious and very ominous as we kept going with the investigation for our trial. For instance, uh, we learned that the secretary used to work for someone that was secretary to the, uh, the, uh, the victim who committed suicide. And that's a very serious, uh, problem there. Mm -hmm. And we learned that the secretary also tried committing suicide herself, but she failed, failed. at it. And then we learned that Maya escaped. Um, no. No. She picked the lock and got out. She said, I'm coming. Just you wait. See, that's a spoiler. We learned it. We didn't know she failed yet. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, before we say too much of anything, too late, probably, mm -hmm. let's uh, get going with the first day of the trial. March 22nd, 9.47 a.m. District Court Definitely Lobby Number 3. Hey, That's what it looks like. Dude, no way! That woman couldn't do anything like that! In court today, there will be a mountain of evidence that will impl implicate. implicate you! A mountain of evidence? I'm certain there is someone out there trying very hard to pin this whole thing on you. Please, Mr. Lawyer! Her dude, like I said yesterday, I'm refreshing like a fresh spring breeze, right? I can't let any sort of scandal ruin that. I understand. Talking. Well, it's almost time. Oh, it's Mia! I know. I can't focus on my situation right now. Or pearls either. No matter what, I have to focus on winning this case by the end of the day. It's him! This is right. Good morning. This is Mr. Attorney. The day of the trial? Maya! She's unharmed, right? Well... When I checked on her earlier this morning, she seemed a bit... How shall I say? Tired? Don't worry. People don't die that easily. Besides, what you really should be considering on this winning today's trial. <laughs> For myself, you must win today's trial. Which is why I sent you a little present this morning. Present? What in the world would you want to give me? You'll figure it out once the trial opens, even if you don't like my gift. I expect you to graciously accept it and win the day's contest, if you please. Wait! The kidnapper sent me a gift? Mr. Lawyer Dude? Who was that? The killer. Uh, um, no one. It has... Something to do with... It has nothing to do with you, so forget you heard anything. Dude, did your nose just get longer? March 22nd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Matt Ungard. 
the prosecution and defense ready? The defense is ready, Your Honor. I say, Mr. Wright, what happened to Miss Von Karma? I don't know, Your Honor. Why are you getting mad at me? Your, Your Honor! Please be quiet, Bailiff. Court is in session! If you must tell me something, keep it brief. Now then, what is it? Prosecutor... Prosecutor Von Karma as... This morning, Miss Von Karma was shot by an unknown gunman! Excuse me? What?! She... Shot?! His present. This, this is totally insane. M Miss Monkarma, is she all right? I don't have that answer. She's alive and in stable condition. That's good. Whew. Your? I thought he'd show up. The prosecution is ready. and is currently under the I have looked this case over and am familiar with The prosecution seeks to prove the guilt of Mr. Hunger. The court acknowledges the prosecution. Right. I finally found the answer I was struggling for. By the time this case comes to an end, you two will be Now then, the, the prosecution would like to call its first witness. Please bring Detective Gumshoe to the police station. Witness, your name and occupation. My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm a detective at the precinct. For now. For now? After this trial's over, I'm supposed to turn in my badge, sir. Detective Gumshoe. And the prosecution has no need for a witness. Lift your head up and face forward like the proud officer, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Yes, sir! Now, Let's have your testimony. If we want to explore the various facets of this case, we must start with the facts. Get ready, Phoenix. This is going to be one tough fight. Yeah. I have to be with Edgeworth as my opponent. The answer he was struggling for. Interesting. Show me this answer you found, finally found, Edgeworth. This murder happened after the Hero of Heroes Award ceremony, sir. The victim, Juan Corita, uh, was found dead in his hotel room. After looking into the cause of death, we believe he was definitely murdered, sir. At first, we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. However, we later found out that the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. Hmm. Hmm. I just said that. After the award ceremony ended, the victim was alone in his room? Yes, sir. Both the victim and the defendant went alone to their rooms, sir. Hmm. I see. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Thanks, Santa.
The murder happened after the Hero of Hero Awards ceremony, sir. Hold it! Would you please give us a brief timeline of what happened after the ceremony? Okay, pal. The ceremony started at 6 p.m. It ended around 8 p.m. And then there was a short break. The special... A special post-ceremony show was supposed to start at the lobby in 30 minutes later. And then... And that's when the victim's body was found, correct? We just assumed the murder occurred during that 30-minute break period. Hmm. Please continue with your testimony, detective. The victim, Juan Corita, was found dead in his hotel room. Hold it! The papers, the person who discovered the victim's body was Adrian Andrews, correct? Yeah. Who's this Adrian Andrews you're talking about? She's the defendant, Mac Ungard's manager. She's a really pretty lady, sir. Ah, so she's a pretty lady. I wonder if she will grace us with her presence. When the post-ceremony show was about to start, she went to get Mr. Ungard. After visiting his room, she went to the victim's room to get him for the show too, sir. I see. And that's when she found the victim's body? After looking into the cause of death, we believe he was definitely murdered, sir. Hold it! The cause of death? Wasn't that because Mr. Corita was stabbed in the chest? Only a careless amateur would believe something so brainless as that, pal. Take a good hard look at the crime photo. Now, a real pro's attention would be drawn here to this bandana. Bandana? Uh, it's bandana, sir. Her, that, that's the thing wrapped tightly around his neck, sir. Was he choked? Oh, yes, yes, I see. His banda banana scented bandana. Then what about the knife? It seems to have been stuck in the victim's chest on purpose after his death. We have a very crafty murderer on our hands here. First, we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. Hold it! And why would you think that? Because it was empty, pal! The German Ninja doesn't go anywhere without his bright red guitar. And we couldn't find it anywhere at the scene of the crime. Oh, then how about this theory? A fan really wanted that guitar, and did the crime to get it! How's that? Um, we thought of that too, but... But? The only fingerprints on the guitar case were the victims. Only the victims? Huh? Hmm, I see. Ah, so much for my theory, then. However, we later found out that the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. Hold it! What convinced you that it had nothing to do with the case? The guitar wasn't at the Gatewater Hotel that night. Well then, where was it? The bright red guitar was eventually found at the TV studio. The victim, Juan Correa, had had apparently only taken the case with him, sir. So you mean he forgot to put the guitar inside the case? Yes, sir. Even when he was on stage for the ceremony, he didn't have his guitar. That's weird. So that guitar, guitar case was empty even before he got the hotel? Yeah, that's right. So it's really... So it's really had nothing to do with the case after all. Hmm. I believe.
No! No! Oh, not you too! I observed that! I look forward to it. 
negotiations. No! No, 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 detective. Let's continue with the testimony. No, my poor pension too. Detective, if you value your money, I suggest you proceed. Yes, sir. We can talk about my pension later, sir. Um, what about what I was saying? Hello? Anyone? As for evidence, there's the German Ninja's button. Hold it! Do you have any proof that button belonged to the victim? It's covered blood. Huh? What do you mean, pal? Oh, um, let me put it this way. I'm asking you if you have any evidence to back up uh, your claim on this. This button was ripped off the Gemin Ninja's costume. Huh? <laughs> but can't you tell by just looking at it? <coughs> and uh, the victim's blood is on it! Yep. Anyone could have smeared her that blood on the on that afterward. But Mr. Edgeworth! Help me, sir! Alright, I knew it had to be this piece of evidence. Now to reel this one in. Huh? The button was attached to the costume by thread, obviously. And that thread snapped when the button was torn off. If you match up the ends of the thread on the costume with the thread on the button, it's a perfect match. Yeah, that's it! Hit they're a perfect match, pal! <laughs> that's Edgeworth for The defendant's fingerprints were found all over the knife. There is no way to determine how the knife was held at the moment of the murder. So, is the defendant the owner of this knife then? The defendant brought the knife for the crime, which makes this a premeditated murder. Wait a second! What? So the basis of your argument is that that this was a premeditated murder is simply that. My client bought a knife beforehand. That's right, pal. The defendant did not buy this knife. Huh? 
a good look at the handle of this knife. You'll know what I'm talking about. It's from the hotel. Huh? It's a Gatewater Hotel seal set on the handle. Gatewater? I think it's I've heard that hotel. name somewhere before. That's the name of the hotel, the Gatewater Hotel. We had a case on there before. Uh-oh. The murder knife was actually property of the hotel. Which means this murder was not premeditated. Yes, that is very true. This is a very big... <laughs> what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sorry, but the defense is simply too careless. What? I think whether the crime was permitted or not has already been determined. How so? I admit this knife is hotel property. There is no one currently on the police force that is dumb enough not to realize this. But I didn't know. The question is, where did this knife come from? Why is that so obvious? It came from the victim, Mr. Cordia's room. Sorry, Your Honor, but that's incorrect. Huh? The victim ate a meal last night before he was murdered. With that being the case, I would like to draw the court's attention to what is on top of the table. There is a knife and a fork on the table! Then, where in the world did this knife come from? If it pleases the court, I would like for us to recall the room of the defendant, Mr. Mark. Especially what was on top of this table. There is something missing. Perhaps it's a single knife? We investigated the leftover dishes in the business, and while we were investigating, we came to the conclusion that Mr. Matt Ingard's knife was missing. <laughs> Mr. Engard had gone to the victim's room with the knife he had used during the visit. Why would he carry a knife to a visit? To kill, of course. And with that, I believe the prosecution has proven this was a premeditated murder. I'm gonna have to side with Edgy on this one. Amazing, Mr. Edgeworth! Absolutely brilliant! A brilliantly clear deduction! It seems like Edgeworth had this plan from the very beginning. This must be one of those traps and I just walked headlong into it. Hmm. A murder weapon with fingerprints and a button from the victim's costume. There is quite a sizable amount of evidence here. I can safely say that any further deliberation is a waste of your time. Although, I wouldn't mind if the defense were to present evidence not yet shown to the court. Evidence not yet shown? It means evidence that the court hasn't seen yet. In other words, new evidence. What does the defense have to say about this, Mr. Wright? Um, uh, well? The judge is favoring the prosecution. If we answer with something wrong, that grave of his will, that gavel of his will be ringing out of the sound of the, our defeat. Mr. Wright, do you have something important and necessary to present to this court? Of course oh, we are. The glass. Actually, I do. There's one. Okay. One piece of evidence that catches my attention. Something that this court has yet to see. Mr. Wright, I will say this one more time. I do not feel this trial needs to continue at all. However, I am giving you one chance and only one. 
the judge is saying, right, is don't try pulling one of your usual bluffs here. If I mess this up, it's curtains for all of us. Mr. Wright, hey, now you may now present one and only one piece of evidence. Now then, that what is this important evidence that you must show to the court? This, Your Honor. Take that! This is a wine glass, is it not? Please, look at the photo of the crime scene one more time. The scene is a mess because of the victim's struggle against the assailant. The vase was broken. His makeup...
So today I'm gonna tell you everything and anything. Even things that don't have to do with the terrible crime. Miss Witness, that terrible crime is all this court needs to know. And please put that gun gone. Shush, I'm talking to my dear Edgy Wedgy right now. Don't interrupt us, Gramps. Yes, madam. No, 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 please. By all means, interrupt her, please. <clears throat> anyway, witness, your testimony, please. It's true what they say, that youth and hot-headed nowadays. Not that I mind at all, Edgy. Now then, where should I start? The witness was on a security detail at the hotel on the night of the murder. Is this correct, Miss Olbag? It was a great job being able to see my dear Ed John. It was... Almost too much for my little heart to handle. You mean you were a fan of the victim? Look, everyone's crazy over that on guard. Saying he's cute in a fresh way or something? But not me. I wouldn't say anything so silly. After all, I have no interest in that little child him. I'm only interested in real men. Oh, um, but those two were the same age! Anyway, as I was saying, I was pacing in front of his room that night. Very well. Please tell the court what you witnessed the night of the murder. Leave it to me, Edgy Poo. Please don't call me that. Anyway, after the ceremony, I went to pace around in front of the hallway in front of his room. There was something I was interested in finding out, you know. Well, since I was on the job, I made sure to keep a good eye out the whole time. That's when someone shoved up, showed up. It was a man coming out of poor Juan's room. It was on guard, man on guard. He was trying to sneak his way out of Juan's room. Hmm, so Mr. Ungard came out from the victim's room. Say, it has to be him. He's the murderer. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. And please not to upset this old woman. Anyway, after the ceremony, I went to pace around in the hallway in front of his room. Hold it! Miss Olbeg, what was your point on that night? Post on that night? The lobby? I was supposed to help set up the stage for that trifling show. But I refused to help. I'll have you know it was for that lame-headed samurai show. And I even looked out a few of the nights. Maybe it was a good thing this show didn't go on. Besides. That manager with the glasses seemed to be working hard at it without me. So I thought I'd take a break and spread my wings a little. And that's when you went to hang around the victim's door? There was something I was interested in finding out, you know. Hold it! Something you were interested in? Just what was that? It's not some little thing I can just go around telling everyone, you know. It's top secret between me and Juan. Ah, and Edgy, of course. Mr. Edgeworth, what is this thing she was interested in? I have no idea. I despise gossip, Your Honor. Gossip? If it has something to do with the case, then you can append it to your testimony. It looks like we shouldn't force this right now. And did the witness say in the vis vicinity of the victim's door the entire time? Well, 
since I was on the job, I made sure to keep a good eye out the whole time. Hold it! Oh? Then you would tell us the number of people who went in and out of the uh, victim's door room? I have no idea. I wasn't born so I could count things for those who didn't pay attention in class. That's why ever since I turned 20, I kept track of how old I really am. Yes, well, that would explain why your age was not recorded in the record. When someone showed up. It was a man coming out of poor Juan's room. Hold it! Who in the world was that? I'm not allowed to say. This sort of information has to be carefully guarded from the masses, son. The man that came out of the Juan's room. It was. He was. Yes, he was. Ah, um, no, I'm too scared. I can't say his name out loud. Oh, why? What? What, what, what I wouldn't give to have Francisco whip right now? Well, I guess I can tell you since he was such a bad boy anyway. It was on guard, my own guard. He was trying to sneak his way out of Juan's room. Hold it! You saw my client? Are you sure about that? Yes, I. Really? Annoying brat, when I say I saw someone, I saw that person. Why do I get the sense of deja vu? Maybe to avoid a mess like last year, I should evolve into this a bit further. What was he wearing? Please. Tell me about the man's clothes in the more detail. What troublesome man you are, really, as if something like that matters. But it does! Ah, uh, now what was it? Oh yes, it was that thing. What thing? That gaudy thing he's always wearing. That racing jacket. He was wearing that jacket at the detention center, too. Most of my clients are wearing their actual clothes in the detention center for some reason. That thugs bet. For nothing but seducing women out of their pantaloons. Ah, <sighs> man. Um, right. So, Mr. Wright, was this testimony just now important or relevant in any way? Uh, yeah, it was very important. Of course it was important, Your Honor. Objection! Perhaps you would like to point out what part of that testimony was important. Don't you see it, Edgeworth? Your Honor, I request what the witness said about the jacket be appended to her testimony. I don't quite see where you're going with this, but all right. Witness, please. Oh, well, I don't like bad mouth anyone without reason, but if I must. He was wearing his flashy racing jacket. Honestly, it's all just for show. Objection! Miss Oldbag. What? Don't say my name for no reason. Do you know what this is? Nah, it's a button number two of the damn ninja's costume. Now I know she's an obsessed fan. She identified it in a single glance. Give it here, give it here. If you don't give it to me, I'll punish you with this. That's just a toy gun. Wow, she really is a diehard fan to want a button covered in blood. This button was discovered on Mr. Engard's body during the full body search. Say, say? This button proves beyond a shadow of a doubt it was that rascal Engard. It was caught up in the pleats of his nickel samurai hakama pants. Say, say? 
and in guard is the Nickel Samurai. Witness! Now, it may just be me, and I do have an active imagination. But just now, didn't you say that the defendant, Matt Ungard, was wearing his usual racing jacket? I'm so sorry. Sorry that you judge people based on what they wear. If I wore the trendiest dress, but instead I had to put up a wearing a ridiculous looking outfit, you'd agree this outfit's his, right? It's like a tape recorder stuck to my frickin' chest. It's heavy, so heavy I wish I could have switched to CDs decades ago and kept you my father's kids out there, understand? Now, take a look in the mirror. You're close to an interesting documentary on curling. You should take a ten for ten for uh, edge poop. Now hold your tongue still there for one second. So what you saw was actually not was not Mr. Ungard the man? What, Mr. Ungar the Nickel Samurai? This what when you think about it. They're really one and the same anyway. Miss Oldbag, this is a very important point we're talking about. Did you poo? Don't you think so too? Just say it's important and agree with me for a change! Witness, think carefully and try to remember as much as you can before you testify! Alright, if you insist. I should be the one saying, not you! Ungard. Nah, that's not good. Hold on. Okay. Ungard. Ungard. Yeah, now I remember. The Nickel Samurai, that's right. It was the Nickel Samurai what I saw. Yeah, it would have been convenient for him to wear his costume during the murder. He had to go to that post-ceremony stage show right after the crime, you know. So he must have worn that Nickel Samurai costume when he was stabbing poor Juan. I... I knew it. I knew you'd say he was inside that costume. What? Did you think there could have been someone else inside that costume? Don't be a bad little boy, thinking such rude things. But... but the possibility does exist. Hi, youngins today, I tell you. There's no way it was anyone else. How do you know that? Because I said so. And what I say is the truth. At least she's just as delightful a witness as she was a year ago. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Oh yeah, please do, darling. Unguard, unguard, yeah, now I remember. Hold it! Would you please get on with your testimony? You're the one interrupting me. Huh, watch your language, young man. What sort of tone is that to take on with an elder? My youthfulness isn't what it used to be, so you should forgive me for everything. And if you keep barking at me like that, I'll start singing at the top of my lungs. Uh, what? A uh, striking figure by the sea, standing all alone is hey, he's the Nickel Samurai! She's actually singing. So it all my poor ears. Mr. Edgeworth, can you please do something about <clears throat> this racket? I got you, boo. Witness, I'll give you a piece of gum later if you be a good, good girl and stick to just the facts. Okay. You promise, right? Alright, I'll be sending the bill for the chewing gum to your office at a later date. Oh, come on! Remind me to send you a thank you note later, too, Edgeworth, old chum. I'll show you, chum. The Nickel Samurai, that's right. Twas the Nickel Samurai that I saw. Hold it! Be a little more careful with your testimony, please. 
Not too long ago, you said it. he was wearing a racing jacket, and now he's not? Not too long ago? Then let me ask you this. When you were an itty bitty, what was your grand dream? Huh? What did you want to be when you grew up, Whippersnapper? My dream, huh? Well, I, uh, wanted to be a judge whacker. Hero of the poli public's court, so what? Say? And look at where you are now. You're not a Judge Wagner, are you? Are you? Well? What I said earlier. Who puts any weight into things like that? And the now is everything. I can't be held responsible for the past. Since when did court become theatrics over testimonies? All that matters is that man was inside the costume. Ain't that enough? If you did that uh, testimony pressing it on the uh, iOS version, you get an achievement for that. What's the achievement? Uh, Judge Wacker? Uh huh. That's it. Oh, that's weird. Uh huh. Yeah, it would have been convenient for him to wear his costume during the murder. <gasps> what now? Jeepers creepers, Mr. Wright. And why would that be? That way, no one could see his face, of course. But there's still no evidence f advantage for him that I can see. In fact, you would think the costume would make him stand out all the more. You're such an annoying child. You know that? You disagree with everything I say. Isn't that what you're always doing to me? I got it. Maybe it was more troublesome for him to change in and out of his costume. He had to go to that post-ceremony stage show right after the crime, y'all know. Hold it! Was there anyone else scheduled to appear at the post-ceremony show? Well... Excuse me. I had to do that. Well... All the contestants were supposed to go on stage in a friendly gesture thing. And that included Je the Gemma Ninja? Of course it included him. And that's not when Ungard guard came out. That's why when Ungard guard came out of Dear Juan's room, I'd give it a second thought. Mm, I see. Do you? Well, anyway, so we must have worn that nickel samurai costume when he was stabbing for wine. Objection! Please take a look at this. Okie dokie now. Yeah, so, it's a knife. Big deal. If you're trying to scare me with that, I'll have you know it won't work. No, no, that's not my intention at all! That's the knife that was used in the murder, correct? Your Honor, do you know why this piece of evidence is important to this case? You don't even have to ask. It's because the defendant's fingerprints are on it. Hmm. Is that what you're driving at? That is exactly what I'm driving at. I'll drive you. What are you driving at? And whose car are we driving here? Oh, not mine. Mine was... If Mr. Edgeworth was... Mr. If Mr. Ongar was really in the Nickel Samurai costume at the time of the murder, then it's impossible for this his fingerprints to be left on this knife. Actually, he would have wiped up all pre previous fingerprints on this knife right off. Oh, that's right. The Nickel Samurai wore gloves, didn't he? off before he began the stabbing. Objection! And why would he do something like that? To leave his prints on the murder weapon? There is no way he would do something like that! However, uh, there is one possibility. Then let's hear your possibility! Over dinner? I mean, I mean it, it's very simple. The defendant went to the victim's room and while in costume as the Nickel Samurai. 
At that time, the defendant held no intent to murder. He was probably just going to relax and talk with the victim about the stage show. Which is why he took his clothes off. But the murder still did take place. It's well known that the defendant and the victim had bad blood between them. Yes, I've heard all about that. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have a... What do you have to say about Mr. Edgeworth's theory? So let me get this straight. Edgeworth's theory goes like this. When the defendant went to the victim's room, he had no intentions of killing him. Now, up to this point, are there any problems with this theory? Uh, yeah, there is. This theory contradicts something in an earlier testimony. What? What are you babbling about? Now, for argument's sake, let's suppose Mr. Ungard was the killer. If that's the case, I think it's impossible for the killer to have gone to the victim's room without intent. This knife, this was used by Mr. Ungard at dinner. Yes, we did establish that. Which means that if my client was in fact the killer, then he brought this knife with him. He went to visit Mr. Corita. I suppose. However, you just said it yourself. At the time, the defendant held no intent to murder. If that were true, then why would he bring a knife? He wouldn't would he wouldn't, would he? Which means, Mr. Edgeworth, your theory was flawed from suspicion sup one. And one more thing. If the murderer was wearing if the murderer was wearing the costume at the time of the murder, then there should be glove marks left on the knife. Which means the defendant's fingerprints shouldn't be all over it like bees on a on a hive. And that brings me to my final point. This knife was planted by the real killer to hide their identity and mislead us. Order! Order, I say! Order in the court! Was this knife really planted by the killer? Why would the murderer do such a thing? To frame Mr. Ungard, of course! It's to frame my client, Mr. Ungard, of course! To frame him? Forcing the interpretation just a little too hard on this one. Objection! But we just established that the witness saw the Nickel Samurai in costume. And if that were true, then there shouldn't be a single fingerprint on his this knife. Witness? Huh? It looks like I've made your life a tiny bit more difficult, huh, Edgy? Witness, did you or did you not really see the Nickel Samurai? Well, I guess at first I might have forgotten, but... Are you saying you mixed up Mr. Ungard with the Nickel Samurai, his character on TV? I mean, I can't really do anything about that. Look, I was waiting around in front of that door because, well... Well, I wasn't waiting around for the Nickel Samurai, that's for sure. She wasn't waiting for the Nickel Samurai? Alright then, who were you waiting around for? That's top secret to anyone outside of security. I have a feeling that you were waiting for Mr. Juan Corita. Am I correct, witness? <laughs> the way you think, you're a sad amateur with a terrible case of nearsightedness. Amateur? Me? What am I an amateur of? So, Miss Albeck was waiting around in front of the victim's room. 
but it doesn't sound like she was waiting for to catch a glimpse of Mr. Corita. Maybe Phoenix, maybe the old bag was waiting for that person. Hmm. If it's who I think Mia's hinting at, it's certainly possible. Miss old bag, were you waiting for this person to come out of the victim's room, weren't you? Who is this person? This is Adrian Andrews, Mr. Ungard's manager. But, but why would the defendant's manager be in the victim's room? It seems that this is the latest room in circulation, Your Honor. Oh, this is... well, this is... Hmm. Huh, I see! Chess seems to be really into the article. If it can be called such a thing. Then this manager with the initials AA, are you saying it's... Adrian Andrews, without a doubt. The witness thought so as well. <laughs> Looks like you found me out. Well, that's fine. I can throw away the whole sworn confidentiality stuff. Witness? What are what in the world are you? Watch out, Phoenix. I got a bad feeling about this. A very bad feeling. I got some information. Some very secret information from a certain source. So that's why I was doing my own investigation. In secret, of course. Well, what for? Oh, I just for myself. Personal reasons and all that. Well, Mr. Redworth. How will you proceed from here? I really don't want to do this, however, I cannot simply let this one slide. I see. Very well then. Witness, please testify about this secret information. Get ready. This is gonna take the wind out of you, youngs. I'm sure we're all capable of handling this. Really, it's not like we're ten years old. Guard is one evil evil man. He thought he could ruin poor Juan by causing a huge scandal. So to do that, he sent his own manager to get in close with him. I cannot condone such very tricks, so I took action. Oh, and this is top secret, you got that? Nobody else but you and me know it. The defendant sent his manager? What a disgr distasteful topic for this court. Why? Nobody's above gossip. And isn't there a saying? Truth is never pleasant. Never heard that one before. Mr. Retchworth, what about this Adrian Andrews person? We have looked into this matter. And found that the truth the article proposes in it is in fact baseless gossip. Hmm. But should this be true... Then this proves that the defendant did bear ill will towards the victim. So this means I have to smash this rumor once and for all. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Be careful. The old bag seems rather excited right now. That's right. On guard is nothing but your average foul-blooded youth. Well, as the old saying goes, you gotta burn old bags with fire. Time to fire up the afterburners and hit the highway to the danger zone. That ain't guard is one evil, evil man. Hold it! You can't say something like that without proof. That's just slander. You're just slander, but it's true. That woman was getting intimate with poor Wyatt. Look, says so right here, doesn't it? Manager to the stars, Miss A.A. But the name in the magazine this came from is Gossip Land. What? Are you saying that gossip is all just a pack of lies? Huh, what do you know? I suppose next you'll swear to me that the news is 100% truth. Um... 
Honestly, Sonny, you can't discriminate between the news and gossip. Yes, discrimination is bad, Mr. Wright. Discriminate? When did I do anything like that? Anyway, Unguard will never get me to say too shy. He thought he could ruin poor Juan by causing a huge scandal. Hold it! A scandal? What do you mean by that? You're a dim-witted one, aren't you? I can't believe you don't know what a scandal is. Actually, I do know. I pay attention to the news about the president. Honestly, what are they teaching kids in middle school these days? Uh, no, no, I wasn't asking what the word scandal means. Even I know that much. Well, the Ungard thought he could own a monopoly on popularity. And so to do that, he sent his own manager to get in close with one. Hold it! You don't have any proof that Mr. Ungar did such a thing. Oh, uh, you must be suffering from shock. The shock of hearing the truth. And now since you're so much in shock, you can't do anything right. You're right. I can't do anything. But boy, do I wish I could do something about you. All right then, Sonny. Show me what you got. Can you show me proof that I'm guarding and bearing you will toward one? Um, at the moment, no, we cannot, so we're going to decline at the moment. I don't have any proof to offer, for now anyway. Say, just as I thought. And you were lecturing me about saying things without proof. You've just given me a free pass to say whatever I want, whenever I want, silly boy. Me and my big mouth. That's the way the cookie crumbles for you and what. I cannot condone such dirty tricks, so I took action. Hold it! Man. So, what do you mean by took action? Like I already told you, I was lying in wait close to the crime scene. Once that slimy woman came out of Juan's room, I was gonna capture her and teach her a good lesson. Something you youngs need. You were going to teach her a good lesson? I was going to make her eat the thing. I was going to make her eat the damaging beams of my ray gun. Like this. No, stop! Well, it was too bad that woman didn't come through the door that night. Oh, and this is top secret. You got that? Nobody else but you and me know you, okay? Wait! Yeah. What? I'm a busy woman. Tea time with the kids is over. Secret information that no one else knows yet? If that's true, then how do you know the secret information? Oh, well, that's because I'm a pro. Yeah, that's it. Ah, it's secret. Even if you drill a hole into my brain, you'll never find out. How in the world did that old bat get such a secret piece of information? I feel like I need to present evidence here for this. Give her Lionel's camera! So no one else is supposed to know this secret information, correct? If that's true, then why do you know it, Miss Old Bag? Well, why are you looking at me like that? Stop it! Witness! I'm sad to say, but this is how you found out th this secret, isn't it? Take that! This is investigative reporter, Lada Hart. Oh yes, I remember that mischievous girl. From that, uh, that channeling case a few months ago. She reported that she had lost a certain note she had written to herself. She reported such a thing? On that piece of paper, she had written down some of her outrago outrageo or er, impress impressions about the relationship between the victim and Miss Andrews. What? 
outrageous ideas, you say? No, no, no! I said impressions! Then, then, then everything written on this piece of paper is completely meaningless. Ah, that's it! That's the note! Ah. Ah. No, you see, this is something completely different. This is my top secret list of groceries to buy! Then you are the one who took Miss Hart's note? I'm a huge fan of wands, that's why. That infamous puffy-haired whippersnapper? She's working with that evil unguard. She said so herself, unguard on his sidekick. She was so happy, smiling like a silly duck. And I was only checking out what she had written. Edgy Poo, you believe me, don't you? No. I was only trying to help out the angel I am. It's only one little piece of paper. I've never taken anything else before this time. Well, it was only a piece of paper. I suppose we can overlook this just this once. She looks like she's really sorry. Should I forgive her? No. Nah, let's pile the pressure on her. If I let her up uh, now, well, she'll get away. I have to find some way to inflict a damaging blow to the prosecution. Witness! You said that y the only thing you stole that night was this note. Uh -huh. Is this correct? Why don't you listen more carefully, you annoying brat? I saved this piece of paper from the terrible lonely trash can, that's all. You're lying, damn it, and I can prove it! Are you putting my credibility under scrutiny? Miss Oldbag, I don't believe that the no is only thing you stole that night. You also stole this. Miss Oldbag, that note was with the camera inside its case, wasn't it? A camera? Yesterday, Lada Hart was raising a huge stink over her camera. She kept saying something like, My sweetie $1,600 camera disappeared on me. Why, why, witness? What is it, Gramps? If you have the note, then it, it then it is only logical that you have the camera too. Uh, looks like you found me out again, Sonny. Is this the camera you're looking for? Uh, that's. Boy, even though I look like this, I'm still a person. I still eat meals like you. I fall in love and borrow things from people. Um, I think you should define the, your definition of borrow with a little off. I saw that woman's business card, and that's when I noticed it said, Slimebag Celebrity Photographer Extraordinaire. Well, when I saw that, I had to know what sort of picture she had taken. I'm a professional security guard. It's my business to know these things. Bailiff, check this camera's photos. Hurry! We must examine him at once! Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what do we have? A migraine. There is only one photo that seems to be relevant to this case. Please present it to the court. Well, if you let me. Th this is... This is the Nickel Samurai! See, I told you. That's the guy I saw. This proves that the witness was not lying earlier about this matter. What does this all mean, Mr. Edgeworth?
still on his ritual set. If that is the case, then this nickel samurai is. How did it come to this? I think this brings us to the end. We have examined every piece of evidence thoroughly. Final comments, Mr. Wright. This court will consider them before we close. Do you agree with this photo is decisive evidence against your client? If this photo really is decisive, then we're done for. But if I raise an objection here and blow it, then I would put Maya's life in jeopardy. I can't make a mistake here. There is only one road out of this mess. This photo that Lada took. There's... There's something strange with it. There's... There's something strange with this photo! Your thoughts, Mr. Edgeworth? I think we can all agree there's nothing strange with this photo. There's no way for the defense to debunk this photo, even with the bunker buster. Debunk with the bunker buster? Is that what you're planning to do, Mr. Wright? Um, anyway, please look at the photo one more time. If you really believe you can honestly find something wrong with this photo, then you should only need one chance, correct? Mm -hmm. Um, well... I have to find something wrong with this photo. I can't let this ch chance go by. When in the... Where, where in the heck did she take this photo anywhere? It's all out of focus. Why can't she take a good shot, especially when it counts? Well then, let's hear your objection. What of this photo is strange? Simple, Your Honor, it's right here. Take that! I would like to direct the court's attention to this one area right here. And on the other side. W what are you pointing to? His ankles? If you could see this person's ankle, well, that would be one thing. However, you can't. Uh, and what does this mean exactly? The Nickel Samurai in this photo cannot have been Mr. On Guard. What is the meaning of this? I wonder if you would care to elaborate with actual facts, that is. Let's take a look at the Nickel Samurai poster. Please pay attention to the area around the bottom of the Hakama. His... his socks. You can see his socks! Exactly. However, in this photo... The Nickel Samurai is clearly holding his Hakama up just to walk! There is only one explanation for this. The person inside this costume is clearly much shorter than the defendant. Alright, I think I've turned things around for myself this time. Huh? What is? That's true. It's just letting the trial run itself. As if he's only along for the ride. Along for the ride? What do you mean by that? I can only think that perhaps he doesn't feel under attack at all. Uh-oh. He doesn't feel under attack? Then he's not taking any damage? You're not hitting me hard enough, Phoenix. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, where does this leave us? <sighs> if the person in this photo is not not on guard, then everything the prosecution has tried to prove has become meaningless. Mr. Edgeworth, 
What? <laughs> right. I have something I want to ask you. Will you marry me? I think you have proven that the person inside this costume is not man on guard. In that case, who is this a photo of? Who is the person wearing the nickel samurai costume? Don't stress over this, dreams. It's very simple. Yeah. Why is he so calm? Mr. Wright, let's hear your thoughts. Who is the person in this photograph? Well, I can only guess one person. Andrian Andrews? If you want to know who that Nickel Samurai is, it is none other than Miss... this woman! And why would you say that it would be Miss Andrews? What in the world points you to her? For starters, she's short. Uh -huh. And she can freely move in and out of Mr. Ungar's room. Finally, she had dinner with Mr. Ungar that night. Then okay. how does that all add up? It means that it makes it very easy for her to get a certain item. A certain knife with Mr. Ungard's fingerprints all over it. The knife was used as a murder weapon. Why don't you just say what it is you want, Mr. Wright? I have to do this now. This is my last chance to turn things around. The defense man... The defense motions to indict Miss Adrian Andrews in the murder of Juan Corita. It was Miss Andrews who tried to frame the defendant for the crime. Order, order, order! It looks like this trial has hit the most unexpected development. Mr. Edgeworth? This court is issuing a subpoena for Miss Adrian Andrews. A verdict cannot be passed without first hearing her testimony. All right, this is it. This is kind of bad for us. Huh? What do you mean? Adrian Andrews was summoned to the court as a witness. One more day? <laughs> if I don't get a verdict today, then Maya... Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenix. Now then, we shall set Miss Andrews' testimony for tomorrow. What am I supposed to do? The judge is about to adjourn the court. I've got no choice but to do this. Now then. Objection! Please, Your Honor, continue the trial. You must pass a verdict today. I can't do that. We cannot hear Miss Adrian. I am poor wasting such valuable time. Edgeworth? <laughs> Your I request that you please continue with today's trial. B but. We cannot continue due to this unexpected development. Unexpected development? I think you underestimate me, Your Honor. And what do you mean by that? That Mr. Peter Wright would save his way to subpoenaing Miss Andrew and Andrews is all halfway according to plan. Even if Wright was a bit slow. WHAT?! What is the meaning of your statement, Mr. Edgeworth? As Miss Adrian Andrews is currently waiting in the prosecution. Yeah? 
everything. Everything was planned out in advance by that man? Very well. We will call the next witness. However, before we proceed, we shall take a 10 minute recess. Please prepare your witness in that time, Mr. Edgeworth. The court will now take a 10 minute recess. And I think that'll do for tonight's episode of Let's Replay Phoenix Wright Justice for All. When we come back, we will hear the witness testimony of Miss Adrian Andrews. If you like this video, hit that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment if you want. Ring that bell to be notified of our next videos coming out. And until then, this is Sora Darkchild and Ami Darkchild signing off. Have a good night, folks. Good night.